You know, after this game released on Friday, this honestly seems like the kind of game that I would have binge streamed all weekend. And I didn't, and it honestly surprised me. But I've been, uh, I've been busy. <laughs> I've been, uh, I've been out here doing things. I was even planning on streaming tonight, even. But uh, I decided, like, oh, I, I would just for like a smidge. It's gotta be a short stream, but here we are. I got new glasses. There's, there's that. I haven't worn glasses on stream in like three thousand years. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, my last pair of glasses, it was literally on my birthday. They were like in the cup holder of my car. And my backpack was on my passenger seat, and I picked up my backpack and went to class, and then I realized I forgot my glass in my car, and I was like, oh, it's fine, they're in my car. And then when I got back to my car, they were no longer in my car, and they were just gone, so, so it leads me to believe that my backpack strap must have hooked onto my glasses and pulled them out of my car, and now they're just gone forever. So, I got new glasses, literally earlier today, this is like one of my first times wearing them. So I was like... Eh, I'll get used to it here and there. I'm probably not going to wear it while wear them while streaming all that much. My uh, optometrist kind of recommends that I wear them more often than I than I don't nowadays, considering they have like a blue light filter and all the stuff that I do on computers and whatnot, both for this channel and for school and for work, all the things. Oh, I usually use this layout, don't I? Oh, yeah. <laughs> for this game, um, not the other one. So I might start getting used to you know, wearing these while I'm, like, editing or working or whatnot. I'm probably still not going to wear it super often while I'm streaming, but, like, I'll try I'll try it out for this stream. I'll try it out for this stream, at least. Let's give it a give it a bit of a shot here. Might, uh, might help my eyes here and there. So, this is going to be a glasses stream in a stream with, like, a new pair of glasses. We've got, rather than the, like, black whatever the heck thing we're bob, this is the bridge here. I don't know what this part here is then. But rather than the black that, it's silver now compared to my old pair and whatnot. Did I ever wear my glasses during Three Houses? I probably did. I probably did. So anyone tuning into the Three Houses series, I guess, would see the continuation of that. But yeah, I was uh, I was occupied with things this weekend. One of which included working on this uh, old 1952 truck currently in our backyard. Cleaning it up a bit, preparing it to uh, hopefully in the near-ish future go to like a new home where we can work on it like one of my uh, one of my relatives places where there's actually a garage to put it unlike here where there is not but anyway let's play let's play a little bit of three hopes i can't stay up too late because i gotta get up at like 6 a.m tomorrow to go to work and it's currently like 9 18 p.m so again i wasn't even planning on streaming but here we are i wanted to stream this i haven't played it in a few days and it's a new release so there's that western home territory this thing where bob whatever the oh activity points recover that means i gotta go spend an activity point at least is what i better do let's go spend an activity point of some sort but yeah i uh <laughs> i wanted to stream it this weekend but you know schedules don't always work out so well yesterday i wanted to stream some uh tales of symphonia that whole like sunday weekly three player four player no four player my goodness what am i getting mixed up with that was a three player series um but it didn't work out for other people's schedules so couldn't quite do that so i've uh i've honestly been going a little bit ham on editing the uh the minecraft series lately interestingly enough um who do i need support with here the most am i a c with anyone there's constance there who's someone else who's like really hyped about it i don't know i don't know sure how mm. How about Linhart here? Sure, let's do that, I suppose. That is what we shall do. Bear witness to my true power. I'll do what I can. Hoifect! Aw, oh, sweet! Got an arithmetic textbook. Didn't I just give one of those to, like, Hubert last time? There's more conversation available. Oh, she's nice. But yeah, so I'll just stream for, like, an hour or two tonight. <laughs> That's what I figure I'll do. And then go past the heck out and go to work tomorrow. Also, I, I've been doing a decent bit of working from home. And you can tell when my piano just becomes like research documents all over the place. So there's that. Um, so. Oh, okay. Interesting. Let's see this here. Linhart, you skipped the war council meeting again. If you have any pride at all as a noble, it would behoove you to start acting like one. I have pride. Some at least. But speaking of noble comportment, I seem to remember a certain someone who obeyed the church for a time and opposed the empire. Oh, your tongue cut 
blades like a thousand sharpened blades. Nonetheless, I did what was required for survival. My dream of regaining my family's status would be forever lost were I to perish. And I cannot permit such a thing to come to pass. All I do is for the sake of House Nouvelle's revival. That's lovely and all, but... It is not lovely! As the tale goes, House Nouvelle had passed down the crest of Macubal for many generations. Cease your endless yammering and listen to me! So I am forced to wonder why it is that you, a legitimate heir to the family, do not possess said crest. What's more, in its place you have the crest of Noah, who was one of the four apostles. Has your house stymied and deceived Imperial investigations for generations? And if so, how? If you aren't going to listen to me, I refuse to even entertain answering that question. <sighs> well, I've grown tired of speaking, so we'll have to continue this another time. Good night. Wait, no. I'll answer you. Just don't treat me like dirt trodden underfoot. Then, by all means. Perhaps in the course of your explanation, something of use to House Nouvelle's restoration will crop up. I would like that very much. Well then, to be frank, it is said that Saint Noah is an ancestor of House Nouvelle. The Saint feared her crest, already rare even in her time, could prove a source of utter calamity. As such, she forged a magic that tricked crest investigation devices and aided her descendants. Fascinating. And is there anything else regarding Saint Noah? Your disdain is palpable. Now, does any of that sound of use to restoring my house or not? I cannot say. I must hear the rest first. You realize it would be bothersome in the extreme if I told you everything and none of it was helpful, yes? If you wish to hear more, I must have a guarantee it will provide something I can use. <laughs> what a bother. Lenhart's only got so much time not napping to, uh, <laughs> to be paying attention to things. Anyway, um, so yeah, I spent a decent bit during the weekend. I spent a decent bit today, actually, working on this, uh, working on this old truck and whatnot, cleaning it up and whatnot, spraying it down with a hose. So the doogie, you probably can't really tell from there on the doogie cam, but she's soaking wet. She got a lot of spraying with the hose today, so she, uh, that's got to be like one of her favorite things to play with. So she had a lot of fun with that. Hello, hello, Palm. How are you doing today? So yeah, the doggie's really happy. She's probably going to be sleeping like a rock tonight. Most likely, if I had to guess. Um, when I was rolling up the hose, it's like two smaller hoses that are attached so that, you know, it has enough length to go where it needs to go and whatnot. And as I was rolling it up, the little connector between the two hoses, it exploded on me. So... Now, there's just, like, one half of hose that's just, like, on the side, and the other half that's rolled up is gonna need to be replaced, is the thing. It's funny, when I was out there earlier, she was just, like, staring at it still. Like, the completely detached bit, like, please spray me with it. I was telling her, I can't! It's not, it's not wireless, it's not, that's not how it works, but the doogie just kept staring at it, like, please, spray me with it! It's, like, my, one of my favorite things! So, <laughs> so that was funny, and now she's just here slowly falling asleep looks like she's got a little ball by her right side there she loves that little toy there uh victory conditions the armor knight and their allies must must reach their destination wait do i need to do all the side objectives hold on hold on i didn't <laughs> i forgot to read the thing rebob of the surrounding things hold on total enemies defeated in this chapter 2000 okay so that's across like this whole chapter i guess but i don't need to do like all the side objectives it just just making sure, just making sure of that is all I'm doing. At least it does wind up loading this stuff pretty fast. Um, so let's see here. So sword is pretty good. Yeah, so everyone's changed back to like a class they can work in. I only have so many intermediate seals is the thing. So I'm going to want like lance users around here. Most likely, well, sword and uh, hold on. What kind of enemies are we getting? Um, so we're having ones that uh, having sword and axe users. Is that what that's telling me? Um, it says that you're effective against lances, but we're going to be seeing a decent bit of uh, swords, axes, and paunchers. And uh, they're all going to be ground dudos, I guess, is what this is telling me here. I mean, who's hyped? Who's hyped as heck right now? Oh, yeah, we have Ash! Have to do my best. 
he's higher level than all my other dudos because I don't know if this game expects you to like evenly distribute like level ups across everybody. Manuela and Yuri. Oh yeah, it's my punching Yuritsa right now. So be it. Well, is Yuritsa gonna come on in and punch Let's things then? <laughs> is that uh, is that what's going on here? I don't need my unit here per se. Um. This war is ours to be won. <laughs> Ferdinand von Armer is here to save the day. Worry not. But should I bring a swordy? Nah. Nah. Don't worry. All we need is our new recruit, Bow Lad. Um, Ferdinand von Armer. Um, two shots of vodka and punching Death Knight, I guess. Death Knight now without horse and now with punching, I guess, or something or other. Yes, overwrite the save data. Okay. So, I will try to get the S rank if I can. I feel like I can get the S ranks on the first tries with, like, the basic battles, but, like, the main chapter battle is never happening. I'm gonna need to, like, go back and do it later <laughs> in most of these, uh, in most of these cases. So, let's see here. Wind stance. While holding ZR, use L to create and place a zone of wind? Huh. Okay. Yeah, you have a lockpick, so that's gonna be handy if, uh... You know, there's a chest on whatever map. I do wish that in the little tutorial clip, it would show, like, the time skip designs, not the, uh, not the academy designs, considering, you know, we play most of the game in the time skip here, only, like, a tiny smidge before. Um, Seize reduces damage to some enemies by that. Okay. Okay. Hi. Hi. Yeah, look at you all wet. Still soaking wet. Gonna make my carpet in here smell like wet dog, aren't you? That's what you're totally going to do here, whether I like it or not. Um, but yeah, it's Fallen Saga 2 Electric Boogaloo. Yes, indeed. How go things today, Mortis? How go things today? Hi. You want to relax here next to me? Hey, is that what you want? Okay. Okay. You can relax here next to me if you want. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I'll turn off the doogie cam for the battles, though, because, yeah, the map is important and whatnot. Spar the armor knight, and that's retreat. Hold on, so place down a zone of wind, huh? Okay, that's, um, how long does that last? Because if that just keeps going, that just seems like it keeps going, is what it seems like. Interesting. I mean, hold on. Hold on. Ferdinand von Armor can go here. Haunching Death Knight can run across to here, and then Manuela can go this way. But yeah, good thought you hate summer because it's hot and you don't like heat. I don't like sand. Um, yeah, I understand the feel there. Here in the land of Canada, it was like a really nice, pleasant summer day. It was the perfect day for like going out and working on the uh, old truck in the back, which I don't know if I've properly talked about it during the uh, Fire Emblem series before or not. Um, Whoa! It's a, oh my good gracious! Oh my good! Wow! Wow! Use a thing for funsies, I guess. My goodness, this is a bit insane. You know, it's a lot easier to talk and tell stories during Fire Emblem Three Houses than it is Three Hopes here, because it's a lot more active and it requires a lot more concentration. And I'm losing my mind a whole lot more. You know. Is kind of the ah, is kind of the thing. But anyway, um, to talk about that situation going on there. So for a couple decades now, my family has had this uh, old truck in the back in this like tent garage kind of thing. Rebob, a 1952 Fargo it is. Can I break that too? Sweet, sweet, sweet. Got it a couple decades ago because my mom thought that like one day it could be a cool project for like my dad and I to restore working on together. <laughs> yeah, leading up until the uh, situation with the tire which happened today um leading all the way up to that oh my good gracious things are shattering ash ketchum from pallet town is going to become a pokemon champion out here you can't stop him you can't stop him let's become ferdinand von armor okay my goodness the perfect dodge it's so hard to talk and concentrate but yeah so we had it for like a really long time around here with that being the idea but you know Eventually, you know, I started getting involved with, like, university and this channel, and, uh, you know, I don't have as much time on my hands as I once did. 
and whatnot because of that. And my dad, his physical condition is not the uh, not the best. He worked in HVAC for a long time, working on like furnaces and appliances, and he would be on like hard concrete on his knees and often without a pad and whatnot. So uh, that kind of caught up with him. And for the past several years now, he's been on like workers' compensation. And he's been stuck at home and uh, just healing up, taking things easy. He's been doing like some online classes in the meantime as he's, you know, stuck at home bored without a whole lot to do. But yeah, he can't get down on his knees and do like a whole lot of work like that. He needs to wait on knee surgeries. Wah! My goodness gracious. I mean, the nice thing about like healthcare in Canada is like, you know, if you uh, find yourself in that kind of situation, you don't have to worry about losing an arm and a leg in terms of, uh, <laughs> in terms of costs. But the bad situation when it comes to things here in the land of Canada is, uh, well, if it's not life-threatening, then you're going to have to wait for, like, 3,000 years to, uh, you know, get the treatment that you need there. So, you know, he had one of his knees replaced, and they apparently did a crappy job of it because it came loose, and now he needs another surgery to, like, fix their mistake. Never mind getting, like, the other one done. So, and that surgery is going to be anywhere from, like, next week to, like, half a year from now. So, oh my goodness, punching death knight. So, you know... Him and I doing it, like, on our own together isn't exactly as feasible as as it might have once been. So, and we don't exactly have the best of space for it. It was in this, like, really simple tent garage thing in the back for a long time. But we had pulled it out, and the plan was just to, like, sell it for a decent while there was the plan. But one day when I had my, uh, my little cousins over... And, you know, we had them in the backyard and we're talking about the Fargo a bit since they were back there as well. Um, about how we once wanted to restore it, but, you know, plans kind of fell through and now we were just seeing about potentially selling it and getting rid of it. Um, they were like, oh, that sounds like a super fun project. We should totally restore it. Do I keep the scythe? Oh my goodness, I do with that. <laughs> my goodness gracious. Well, that's thoroughly wacky, isn't it? Uh, and they took, a, they took a shining to it. They were like, oh, that sounds super fun. We should totally restore it. And we were like, well, that'd be, that'd be cool. I very much like to restore it, but it might not be, you know, super feasible with us on our own. And we have no place to put it. Because, like, this little tent garage in the back is also where we keep, you know, gardening tools and things like lawnmower, things like snowblower, things like the other tires for, you know, vehicles when we're not, you know, using them. Like the winter tires in the summer or the summer tires in the winter, stuff like that, you know? Um... So it kind of sucked having to just sneak past this old truck every single time that we wanted to get to anything, you know? Um, it wasn't exactly the best having to shimmy on past that thing. Um, okay, okay, let's just, um... Let's do this over here. Um, oh my good gracious, what the heck is going on here? My, you're weak. My good, let's do this, how about? Um... But yeah, they, we were like, we don't even really have a place to work on it. Because if you're working on like an old vehicle, you'd want to ideally put that in, say, a two-car garage and have it right in the center so that you have, you know, space on either side to be a... Uh, gosh dang it. I went to, uh, you know, way over the amount of damage that I could have done there. And they recently moved into a, uh, a new place. And they have a two-car garage in the back and a one-car garage in the front. And the only, uh, the only driver of their whole household is their dad, my cousin. So he just uses the one-car garage in the front and doesn't use the, uh, two-car garage in the back at all. So it was like, oh, that could be a potential place for it. And if it's, you know, over there, maybe it'd become, like, a bit of a family project of sorts in a weird way. So, uh, when I asked my cousin about it, he was like, yeah, I'm not really interested in old car restorations. But if you just want a place to, like, put it and work on it, you can just put it here. We were like, oh, okay, that's interesting and gives us something to think about and uh so you know there my goodness this is absolute mayhem this is absolute craziness um so so we might potentially put it put it there another potential home for it could also be my be my oma's place i grew up very much at my oma and opa's opa's place as a uh, as a second home essentially and after my opa unfortunately passed away late last year there hasn't been a driver in that household at all anymore and the uh van that was over there was just sold within the family so there's a two-car garage back there that isn't being used for anything either so there's two potential homes for these things for this thing and all of a sudden it's like oh 
now that there's like somewhere to put it and the idea of it being like a family project maybe this is actually feasible for us to restore after all also hello hello jake frost how are you oh, how are you doing today oh crud oh crud oh crud if i can force your weak point gauge and then do my uh you know i'm just gonna do it i'm just gonna do it. i don't care whatever um <laughs> so we gotta fix up some general stuff first and then bring it to like its new home whichever of those places it winds up being we shall uh we shall see also let me catch up on some things here coming close to the most stressful night in the year of a household of sound sense of people including yourself july 4th approaches oh geez and july 1st approaches here like in america you got your old good old independence day america day essentially but a few days before that is july 1st canada day is the case wow wow plan spamming your family text chat with Senator armstrong memes it's gonna be super patriotic but yeah a few days before that we're gonna have canada day by the time this gets uploaded on youtube it'll be already past canada day because you know these are done a decent bit in advance and whatnot bam time to die you're okay monday shift is rough luckily they changed the schedule so you get out earlier oh nice so at least a bit of a chill day after that yeah canada day is coming up i uh I had hoped that we'd be able to take another uh, another old vehicle in the family to the uh, Canada Day Parade in this. Uh... So my family has a lake cabin at this uh, summer village and the nearby town, which is like a super small town and whatnot, just like go there for groceries and whatnot. Apparently there's going to be a Canada Day Parade there. Well, there's another there's another old vehicle in the family. This one that's in the backyard right now is in like not a very good state at all. It's pretty run down and whatnot and, you know, think about restoring it. The other old truck in the family is fully restored and it's a uh, in beautiful, wonderful condition. Um, it was uh, it was my grandparents truck on my dad's side of the family and they've been losing their memory like really, really bad in recent years. It's a uh, not the best of situations, but they recently passed down this old 49 truck to to my dad because they were like, OK, we want to we want to give this to you at a time that we can still like be there and actually, you know, for sure, be the ones giving it to you, not just be like a, you know, willed kind of thing afterwards. So it was only as of like last summer that we had this uh, this old truck taken out to the lake village where that's its new home and whatnot. So I had really hoped to take this that thing to the Canada Day Parade and whatnot. That would have been a really cool thing, especially if we were able to bring out my little cousins out to the lake to share something with them that I did growing up in that very same truck with my with my grandparents. And, uh, you know, have that be like the true test. Like, this is what the uh, to be restored truck could be one day. Are we for sure willing to put in that effort? You know, is what that could be the test of. But... It's seeming unlikely that we'll be able to take the uh, nice truck out there because it's had its fair share of issues. And one of the things that cropped up is there was a brake pad issue um, <laughs> where, um, yeah, gosh darn it. Oh, well, oh, well, it's fine here. So apparently in uh, those kinds of things, there's supposed to be like two sets of brake pads, like two long brake pads and two short brake pads, like one for each side. So you have like one long brake pad and one short brake pad on each side of the vehicle. But it seems that uh, both the long ones were on one side and both the short ones were on one side, which wow, which means that any time that you braked, it would like pull you to the right, like really, really hard. And that's kind of that's kind of dangerous right there. Um, and that leads us to believe that when my grandpa had restored that vehicle like 20 years ago ish, that he might have just installed it incorrectly back then. So we're trying to get that sorted out and fixed. And might not be able to do it in time for Canada Day. So might not be able to do that, unfortunately, when it comes to old vehicles. But, but yeah, May maybe the stars will align and we'll be able to fix the brake pads before Canada Day coming up in like, my goodness, just like a handful of days. But I doubt it. I doubt it. So that's another old vehicle situation going on around here. <laughs> Canada Day, isn't that the day where they celebrate maple syrup? It totally is. Yeah, we totally celebrate like all the maple syrup and stuff. Um, but yeah, when it comes to the one to be, you know, that has a lot of work to be done on it to restore at all. Um, there's a few things that we need to do. We need to uh, get the carburetor fixed up, which my dad took it out and brought it to a cousin of his and he worked on it a decent bit and we started reinstalling it and it actually seemed to work like just fine and we actually got the truck running and it sounded like you know pretty healthy and not half bad which is 
pretty impressive for like a 70 year old truck and really goes to show that they don't make them how they used to like back then people made things to last nowadays people make things to be disposable so you know the fact that there's something that's 70 years old still runs that's a that's cool um anyway uh, but the fuel filter was freaking uh it was spluttering fuel it's stripped from age so it uh <laughs> so it's currently a fire hazard if it's spluttering fuel so we're looking into getting a new fuel filter so that you can drive it without it being a fire hazard it appears those who slither in the Ooh. Have to do with any of this. oh those textures don't line up at all honestly most of the background environments in this game so far have actually been like pretty good for the most part but this oh oh that's oh my goodness gracious that's that's so jarring this plot that's disgusting and Gloucester alone. in other words we know exactly where the idea to encircle our troops came from and it's weird because that wall back there's not half bad like it seems like it works around the corner there the way that it's supposed to it's just hubert's wall that's crap going to be a true thorn in our side now that he is in charge okay it doesn't look as bad from this angle but now you can't unsee it is the thing and it's weird because like when <laughs> when you look at one of the rocks at like the bottom there and go up a little bit one of the textures like almost lines up like you can see like the semicircle of like one of those rocks from the other side but then you look up more and the other things just don't align at all which leads me to believe that that one rock that sort of lines up is just like a coincidence <laughs> when Duke Regan had no clear air, the Lords were oh my goodness to be next in line. I can't I'm sorry Huber I can't even pay attention to what you're saying that's so disgusting and Claude appeared in an instant and laid claim to the seat of power we were hoping that would be enough to throw the alliance into disarray but he has done a remarkable job of seizing the reins feigning discord with Gloucester while they privately schemed together was an especially nice touch Sadly, it seems we're facing a gifted tactician as well as a skilled leader. Yet for a tactician, he woefully underestimated Count Burgris. I say we finish his education. It is time Claude learns the gulf between his power and the Empire's cannot be bridged with a few clever tricks. So I guess Anne is moving over there, huh? Yeah, I felt like I was suddenly playing Legends Arceus there. My goodness gracious. But yeah, it is really cool and old stuff can still run. So like, it still works. We just need to get like a fuel filter that, you know, doesn't let the fuel leak out and splitter and whatnot. So, you know, we're looking into that and it might be a little bit of a pricey replacement since, you know, stuff like that isn't made anymore. Um, but once that's sorted out, it should be runnable just fine. Should well be. Um, apparently the brakes don't work. So we're going to have to fix the brakes as well. And then you can run it and stop it. <laughs> Those are both pretty important things. Um, so we're going to want to do both of those before taking it to its new home. Like we could get it to either one of these potential homes without, you know, driving it there just by putting it into like a car trailer. But, you know, we don't have like a car hauling trailer ourselves. We'd have to go and like borrow one from my grandparents who don't live in the city here. They live like an hour and a half drive away in some other small town so we have to drive all the way there just to get the trailer bring it back push the thing into it take it like a five minute drive to where it needs to go push it out put it into place take the trailer back an hour and a half drive away that sounds like a massive pain so if we can you know get it running and get it you know possible to stop with the brakes then we can just really slowly drive it to where it needs to go so that's the plan and it's a race against the clock before winter because you, if winter hits, then no way, Jose. So, you know, we should be able to do it in time. Like, it's not that stressful of a time limit. But there is a time limit, and we're racing against the clock of snow being on the ground, essentially. Back to work for you. All right, enjoy work there, Jake Frost. Um, but yeah, so those things need to get sorted out. And there is also the back right tire. It must be leaking or something like that, because every time we fill it up, it, like, starts to slowly go flat again, is the thing. So... There's a spare tire on the thing, and the spare tire on that thing is kept like underneath the underneath the box. And I was like, okay, well, I can do some work on this on my own. My dad's out of town right now, but I was like, you know what? I'll do some I'll do some work on my own today. 
and that's what I probably honestly spent like four or five hours on today was the thing. Today was going out and getting these glasses here, and I uh, and I stopped by EB Games and I picked up some freaking gaming related stuff to send to some of those mad lads who sent me things. Um, but uh. <laughs> and then I came home and then just worked on that and I worked on some of my work work stuff and that's been today and now I'm here and streaming but I was like okay there is a spare tire what if we just put the spare tire on where like the potential problem one is so I cleaned the thing out as I was mentioning earlier and you know the doogie got a lot of hose spraying from that you can actually see the box now there was like a bunch of crap that was in there that I washed out so you can actually see the box again which is cool um and the thing looks a lot in a lot better state with all the gunk off of it and stuff. Um, and I went underneath to take the spare tire off and I can see why, uh, you know, tires aren't typically kept there. Some modern vehicles do still keep like the tire underneath like that. I don't know why, but I can see why it's not exactly super popular because it's a massive pain in the butt to get it out of there. And judging by like how rusted it was there and how difficult it was to get out of there. We've had it for two decades without doing anything with it. And we don't really know the story of it, like, before that point, like, whose hands it was in and whatnot and what led up to that point. But I would honestly genuinely bet that it's probably been anywhere from, like, 30 to 40 years since anybody took the spare tire out of there from the state that I was in. I know it at least hasn't been taken out for at least 20, but it's probably at least 30 to 40. But I got out of there, the spare tire fell, fell out, and I was going to start pulling it out. And as I was posting images of in the freaking story time thing where Bob earlier, I was met with a little bit of a surprise on the spare tire there. If I turn display capture two for a hot second, this, I was like, okay, that's just like a whole bunch of like built up crap over time and whatnot. I can just like, you know, swipe it off. I couldn't, it was freaking bees is what it was, which was very stunning. Like, when I was cleaning it, I was very surprised when I was seeing, like, a couple bees, like, going around here and there. But, you know, they weren't bothering me. I wasn't bothering them. I was like, oh, strange to see some bees around. Yeah, it turns out this is where they were going in and out of. Because when I pulled this out, it didn't seem like it was, like, a massive swarm, like, a colony or anything like that. But when I pulled it out, there was, like, a few going in and out of there. What <laughs> was the thing? So it was like, oh, that's a, that's a bit of a problem there. If it was wasps, if it was wasps or something, I would happily just freaking murderize them all without remorse because wasps are freaking mean but bees bees are freaking sweet you leave them alone and they'll leave you alone you know i don't want any harm to come to bees especially considering how important they are and how in danger they are i are but on top of the spare tire of this truck is not a place that you can have a nest so i'm saddened to say that I had to had to spray some stuff onto the bee nest to you know, hopefully get some of them to screw off. It seemed like there wasn't a whole lot of them coming in and out after that. So after that, I was able to take the tire off to the side. And I kind of dumped this on the side where I had hoped that, you know, if there's any stragglers in there, which there were a few climbing around that, you know, they'd just be able to climb out and like fly out and find a new home somewhere else, hopefully. After that, there were some bees that were coming back and like flying underneath the truck here looking for, looking for this, I guess. So, you know, my heart did break in a kind of way because bees are great is a thing so that was a bit saddening but you know they can't they can't be there because what if i never pulled out this spare tire and we actually did drive this to you know a, a garage where it would stay for the next several years then they would be stuck in a garage where they'd slowly die out there so you know they were kind of screwed either way was a thing so just really bad luck there essentially on the on the bees part but yeah that was what i that's what I dealt with there earlier today. So I was talking a decent bit about that. Um, the truck is green. The tire was red. I mean, you can tell that the truck used to be red because like you can see like red underneath the green paint as in like this picture here. But it seems like the spare tire didn't like was from before changing it green or, you know, it probably just hasn't been touched since, you know, it was changed green was the thing. That's what wasps are like, like the bees. Bees just had, like, the misfortune of being there. I felt really bad. Like, even when I was, uh... Even when I was moving the thing over to the side. Even when I was doing that. Whoa. Up this away. Even when I moved this off to the side and some were climbing out, like, none of them displayed, like, any aggression. They were just climbing out, like... Dude, what the hell? Is what, is what they were kind of like. And I was like, I'm sorry! 
I'm sorry I had to come to this. These glasses are actually kind of uncomfortable when paired with these headphones. They make no visible difference. These are only like for long distance and whatnot. But, you know, my optometrist still recommends me to wear them for the blue light filter is the thing. But with these headphones, I don't think I can wear them for like a super long time. So I'm just going to put them on the side for now. So what am I going to do? Yeah, the bees never displayed any aggression towards me. Even when I was like cleaning out the whole cab here, I was surprised. Yeah, there was a there was that bees are chill, so I felt I felt real bad. But yeah, so it's literally just this thing here that you can see like the bolts how it was screwed on there. So I had to get on my back down here, unscrewing that until the thing like popped down, and it's just hanging loose right now. I'll have to like reattach it at some point when the ground's like dry from all the spraying down that I did and whatnot. And after there's hopefully no more bees that are gonna be flying underneath there. I'll just reattach that because you don't want that dragging underneath. So yeah, that was what I did today. There was that. That was my little adventure today. Was the case. So yeah. And then I had some supper, and then I was like, you know what? Let's do a short stream of three hopes before going to before going to sleep. So that's what we're doing. Found some spoils of war left behind by the enemy. Sweet. Facility can be expanded. There's a spring that has Mysterious Legend about. Apparently, there's some sort of benefit in it. Oh, I was about to say if it gave me back like an activity or a training point, I should have. Uh, you know, save before doing that just in case. I should use like a point or two just in case things are like that. Who do I want to make hyped as heck? How about Ferdinand Von Armor? Why can't I select him? Oh, select two units to raise their morale? Oh, okay. I was selecting him. Ferdinand Von Armor and maybe the new guy of Ash. Ash is already pretty high level, so I'm probably not going to use him too much. Someone who's lower level that needs to go up. Like Dorothy, if I want to use her to, you know, level up and stuff. Okay, so now I can go over here. Okay, yeah, so I'll get there in no time. Let's have a look at the facility. This is what we can do.